Hi everyone, uh, Jedi is here. Today we have this old American uh, drill press. It's Tauka DP220. As you can see, it's in quite bad shape. Um, top and bottom drilling tables damaged. It's very rusty, uh, chalk, uh, it's totally stock. I would like to uh, repaint it. Uh, we'll see how the paint will strip off. And uh, yeah, also we need to change the cables uh, because uh, it's a very old cable there. And this motor, as you can see, it's damaged. <laughs> Looks like that motor won't give up easy. As I said previously, uh, this chuck is in very bad shape, it's all badly rusty. Well, for its age, it's not that bad. To remove these top pulleys, you need some kind of uh, aluminium knocking bar. Otherwise, it's quite hard to remove it. And bearings, as you see, absolutely smooth. To remove these number plates, it's helpful to drive a little bit these nail rivets in as it breaks the rust and using chisel to remove it. But it's very hard and it damages sometimes the chisel. It's, uh, and it's not always it goes off clean. That's the rivet itself. And let's take apart the quail. First I'll remove this uh, driving collar. Uh, you see these prongs which sits in the bearing are about halfway worn, but that's okay. Uh, shaft uh, goes out quite easy. Mm, the places where bearing sits been repaired with some soft metal, tin or the lead. And to remove the bearings, all you need to do is uh, to remove these uh, retaining rings or the nuts, whatever you call them. Looks quite alright, not rusty at all. And surprisingly bearings are absolutely fine, like a brand new. At least that's what I feel with my fingers, no play whatsoever. Smooth and nice. And after cleaning, it's no rust, nothing at all, so I decided to reuse the existing ones. On the other side, bearings uh, goes off exactly the same way. Retaining ring uh, goes out easy. And the bearing is uh, also very good. Uh, feels smooth, no play, so we can reuse it. The quill, uh, it's a little bit rusty, uh, but I believe it will clean up uh, very easily with some scotch bright or smooth sanding paper. A little bit of brushing and it should be quite clean I think. Okay, 
to clean this dirty thing, we'll use some kerosene, which will help to loosen the old grime and stubborn grease. The base, it's not only very rusty, but also been uh, damaged previously, and using some filler was uh, fixed. This is the paint stripper, I will put it on and I'll leave it for a few hours. In the meantime, let's take care of this uh, poor chuck, mm, look how badly rusty it is. So to fix it, we really need to take it apart, uh, take all the guts off, uh, the jaws, the split rings. One by one we'll clean it uh, and then later we'll put it back. It went apart quite easily, not much rust inside. I thought it's gonna be much worse, but looks like even some mm, grease still present there. Also the jaw bits, uh, not damaged, nothing, just dirty and a little bit rusty. This part, uh, it's quite a bit rusty, the outer shell uh, also it's not that bad, but let's clean it in the lathe, beginning with the central bit. I don't know how it's called, a hob, let's call it hob. <laughs> a little bit filing and it will look like a brand new. This, uh, this skirt doesn't look like it's been heat treated because it's quite soft. Uh, file takes it quite easy. But I think the front part, which is now in the chuck, had been uh, heat treated because, as you can see, the file not really taking it that easy like the back part. Of course, with the sandpaper, it's much easier. And after a little cleaning, it looks much, much better. Oh yeah, nice and shiny. With the shell, it's not gonna be that easy. We can take the rust uh, just with a sanding paper, but it has these individual uh, ridges which have to be cleaned with small files separately. And after cleaning, top surface looks very good. Nice and shiny, but we need to take care of these ridges there. I'll use this small thin file and I'll file every ridge uh, individually. It will take a while. about an hour to clean it, but I really really like how it looks like now. And let's see how is the frame doing there. To be honest, it's been a few days, instead a few hours. Uh, even some rust start forming there. <laughs> uh, but looks like it worked, it worked quite well. Let's see how it's scraping off. Yeah, uh, together with the paint I can see quite thick layer of the filler there. You can see under the blue paint there is some kind of grey primer or the filler. Uh, but anyways, let's take it all. It went off pretty easily. A little bit of uh, wire brushing and it will be ready for painting soon. With this part I decided to use a bench grinder uh, with a wire wheel. It will save me a little bit of time. It goes off much much faster. Uh, to remove the rust from the base it took me about 20 
25 minutes where with this one it's probably 5 minutes max oh my god this one was so heavy I couldn't feel my arms when I finished with this one Okay, it's time to put the chuck back together. All the parts was cleaned and looks really good. To put the jaws back, it took me a few attempts uh, because it, I didn't know, but it looks like you have to be placed in particular order if you mix the teeth so the splitterings won't go on. Uh, to put this one down is quite straightforward and there you go Chuck looks like a brand new Off camera I nearly finished uh, cleaning all of the rust uh, this central uh, pipe or the tube uh, I cleaned in the lathe all the smaller bits uh, I cleaned on the bench grinder with the wire wheel it looks not too bad I want to completely rebuild uh, this handle and that knot I'll use this uh, old screw let's cut the ends off as it is too long and then I'll put it in the lathe and turn it down to the necessary diameter I will leave a little bit of existing thread on the other end just to make a little nice uh, bump and this side I'll turn down uh, let's put a thread on it using tailstock it's very easy to get proper center And this is the part for securing this crossbar uh, in the hole. This is how it looks like. Fully rebuilt uh, handle. Off camera I did this brass uh, washer for a little smoother action. And it looks pretty good and this is my favorite part uh, it's time for the fresh lick of paint foam will help to distribute paint much more evenly uh, some hard to reach areas I will finish with the brush hammer right covering everything very very well uh, usually is enough one coat or two coat uh, maximum in the background you can hear the music from a neighbored uh, rehearsal studio <laughs> yeah The motor was damaged quite bad, as you can see uh, the cowling is totally cracked and I believe it's beyond the repair, so I will 3D print uh, the new one. Wire connection box 
it's missing uh, these plates uh, yeah needs repainting too let's take this uh, a foot off and we'll see what we have inside the motor only couple screws went off easily others I had to share as it no chance to remove it uh, this fan surprisingly uh, came off pretty okay as you can hear the bearings in the motor totally gone so we'll have to replace them key from the keyway it's missing but pulleys goes off not very hard so that's good there is a little crack on the very top pulley I'm not planning to restart this one as I won't use the top pulley ever it's funny how much it takes to share the screw off it twists like a spring <laughs> Inside looks very dirty and rusty. I hope the windings are not damaged. Looks like they are still okay, but not much I can see through the side of the motor. Maybe we'll see more uh, after taking this cover off. It's good that none of the screws shared off. Went out pretty okay. And yeah, not much I can see through this hole. Anyways, we'll take the motor apart and then we'll see how it looks like. If any windings are damaged or burned. Uh, some of this, these long bolts also sheared off as there was no, no way to free them. Okay, it looks like motor is totally fine. I can't see any signs of burning or damage. Under this cap there is a primary winding a capacitor switch. We need to disconnect it. Right, this bearing is totally gone, you can even hear when I'm spinning it. I'll remove this number plate the same way as I removed plate from the frame. Just a few hits over the rivets just to loosen them. And then, yeah, this time I'll use a little bit bigger chisel uh, to drive them out. This one I had to do it from the bottom because it was quite hard to hook it on from the top side. Again, removing paint on the wire wheel. And it's ready for painting. Alright, remember these snap bolts. So this is how we're gonna remove the, the stock bits from the frame. The heating together with WD-40 spray uh, should do the trick. I'll use mold grips or the vice grips, or whatever you call them, uh, to drive them out. A little bit of twisting action and it's out. Same way I'll remove the rest of them.
I will be using a sponge method to paint a motor frame again with the hammerite really love working with hammerite perfectly covering everything usually two layers it does the perfect job this is how it looked like after 24 hours drying I need to clean uh, these painted holes for the screws uh, because they are totally blocked. I was too lazy to cover them with masking tape. I think we are ready to put this motor back. I'll start from the bottom part. Uh, this is the spring, spring washer, I think spring spacer, whatever you call it. Uh, yeah, let's try to put the screws in. Let's see how they fit. I think they should be quite alright. Yeah, they are okay. Now it's the router. You see why this uh, spring washer needed just to keep it in place. Here I forgot to put another one uh, of the camera. I just uh, removed the covers and I placed them in. This contact was a little loose, uh, so I a little pressed it down. And then it fits very very well as this wire is for primary winding uh, capacitor switching yeah uh, rest of the screws goes in i made new screws from the stainless steel uh, threaded bar here i was rushing a little bit too much because i forgot to put uh, these angled little uh, corner plates uh, which uh, holds the yeah them <laughs> which holds the cowling uh, but anyways I'll take everything off and let's put them on actually I lost the video where I was printing this cowling and unfortunately I can't show you the whole progress uh, magic so yeah this this one uh, I was about to print this fun too but later I decided to keep original one because it's not too bad so yeah that's a printed one I think it looks pretty much like an original one I had to model it uh, from scratch I used the uh, uh, Fusion 360 that's the junction box for the wires also i modeled it with the fusion 360 and printed it out uh, with abs filament i'll use a ladder to make like a little dust gasket uh, as i don't have any rubber so i decided to use a ladder i think it should be right And we're getting close to the ending of the first part. I'll put this number plate. I really love to do that when you put this one on. It always looks like, you know, like something brand new. So satisfying. <laughs> right. That's the wire box. And that's it, guys. That's the end of the first part this is how it looks like and i'll see you soon thumbs up